What's up everybody, Superdux fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Mercedes AMG C43 Coupe. Huge thanks to Alex for providing me with his very sweet Mercedes here to review for you guys today. So about the C43 Coupe, well, you know, this is this new thing with AMG where they're splitting off. They have the V8 models now, and then they have these twin turbo V6s, which are very, very potent, as you'll soon see. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks spectacular just right off the bat. I mean, these AMGs and all the new Mercedes in general just look really sharp. I think they're honestly leading the pack as far as the, the design these days. It's just so nice. And this one's even nicer because it's got uh, lowering springs on it, as well as these very sweet wheels that help to make it look even more aggressive than a stock one already does and uh, you know it's just really cool with the little black accents you have and just the lines on these coupes look so good and uh, just from every single angle it's just sleek but aggressive and just a really nice balance of being understated but still looking really cool. Right for the interior of the 2017 C43 well it is so nice again Mercedes I think is on top of it as far as the luxury car interiors goes these days they're just so nice but anyway first things first sitting down in these seats these are AMG inspired seats here for the C43 since this is an actual AMG model it's just not the top of the line AMG model but these seats are really nice uh, they have the adjustable uh, leg supports and uh, they just they, I mean the whole seat feels really nice they have great torso support nice uh, thigh support as well uh, they're not super tight you know they're not super racy like some of the other AMG seats, um, but they do feel very sporty and aggressive uh, while also being very comfortable. They're a tad bit on the firm side, but they're still very soft, and I could you know see these seats being very comfortable for long distances, and uh, so it's still very much a luxury car seat. Next to the steering wheel in the uh, AMG here, it is so nice. Uh, you have the Alcantara bits, but you also have the leather, and it's such a thick, beefy wheel, uh, but it gets a little narrower here, right by the 9 and 3 group, which is where you want it, because it, it allows you to still have a really nice 9 and 3 group, but then the rest of the wheel is so beefy. I can't remember the last time I uh, was using a steering wheel that was this beefy. It's just awesome. Uh, you have these nice big metal paddles, too, that are beautiful. Again, every little finish in this car is just so nice nicely done and uh, so it's just a really nice wheel flat bottom and uh, just it's a beautiful thing to look at as well. Next to the gauges in the uh, C43 here, and they're pretty nice, you know, so they uh, are your typical AMG gauges that they use in a lot of the other models, and they look great. I like the kind of checkered uh, background there in the middle of the uh, gauges, and they're, you know, just your simple analog gauges, and you have a very nice large digital portion there in the middle that shows you, you know, your typical arrangement of uh, information like you normally see on these center screens, but there is the AMG section, which gives you all kinds of cool stuff, including a G-meter, your uh, boost gauge, as well as... Uh, all the other uh, little uh, info there for how your setup is for uh, your driving modes and things like that and uh, so great to have all that little information there and I mean that screen is just so high resolution and very nice to look at as well so just really great gauges too. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, uh, again, it's just so beautiful. Everything looks so expensive and high-end, really. I mean, even the air vents, for Pete's sakes, are metal and just feel really nice. And uh, anyway, though, starting up top here, you have this pretty large uh, screen that, uh, you know, is uh, controlled by this little controller down here. And uh, so, anyway, the screen, it's nice. I still, I'm not a huge fan, like most people, of these enormous bezels it has. I don't think that's necessary. Um, and hopefully, you know, it's something they improve over the years. Uh, but it still is a good looking screen. I, I think it actually does look very nicely integrated there. A lot of people think it looks tacked on, but I mean, there's really, with the way this interior design is, there's really no other way to put it on there, and I'm, I'm glad they have it there. I think it's, uh, you know, nicely set up. And the menus and all that, the graphics all look pretty slick and uh, really nice. Um, you know, I mean, it's close enough. It could be a touch screen, uh, but, you know, it's nice with the controller because that way, you know, you don't get any fingerprints. Um, the controller is nice. You know, it has a, a touch pad as well as the wheel. Um, it has a convenient back button. And I mean, there's just a few simple menus. It's fairly easy to navigate, um, you know, but uh, all these controllers, though, I kind of just wish everything was touchscreen. I think it's a little simpler, um, but it is nice the way they have it all set up down here. Also, while we're down in this controller area, 
you'll see your switch for the dynamic mode uh, and that's how you toggle the different drive modes as well as suspension settings, traction control, stability control uh, and then you have the volume uh, knob or I guess I should say roller uh, switch that is again so nice everything is high-end metal it just feels great an exhaust button which is probably the greatest button in this car um, and uh, so yeah just uh, really nice the way there's not a sea of buttons like a Porsche or something it's just a few and so uh, very nicely contained. As far as storage space in the C-Class coupes here it's really great so uh, first things first coming over to the doors here you have a large map pocket with a bottle holder and the way that it's angled you can fit very tall bottles in here which is really convenient and smart uh, and it's a little bit of a better setup I think than the typical vertical bottle holders you see in other uh, door pockets and other manufacturers. Anyway coming over to the center here I still love all of this this open pour wood trim is so nice but anyway you open up this big cover and you have a really large space here you can fit all kinds of stuff uh, towards the back there it's very deep you also have a power outlet there and then you have two cup holders and um, so just a ton of storage there and so really nice because coupes sometimes don't have the greatest of storage areas and so really nice large uh, cubby there and then coming to the back here you have this uh, center armrest that uh, splits in the middle and then you have uh, all kinds of stuff you have a little tray there to set a phone you have a pretty deep cubby as well as two USB jacks and uh, an SD card slot there so yeah really for a coupe uh, the storage space can't really get much better. Backseat space in these C-Class coupes here is also really good. So I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. Uh, I actually have about two inches of leg room there to spare in the back. I also still have enough headroom. So, uh, you know, anyone five foot nine or, you know, even a little taller than that, you'll fit back there just fine. So, uh, you know, a very hospitable uh, backseat. I mean, obviously, you know, it, the seat moves forwards and backwards automatically and things like that, but it's still not a backseat you probably want to use every day. But it's, you know, certainly uh, more than sufficient in a pinch, you know, every once in a while. And so overall, pretty good back seat. And the same thing goes for the trunk. Uh, the trunk is really roomy for a coupe sized trunk. Uh, it's just really large. Uh, it goes pretty far back there as well. And it's a very wide opening. And you can just fit a ton of stuff in that trunk. So uh, a very versatile coupe. All right, so start up and go for a drive. Uh, the C43 AMG uh, has a typical Mercedes key, which is a very nice key. Uh, and of course, it's keyless entry, push button start here. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. So setting off in the 2017 Mercedes AMG C43 Coupe. So uh, first thing that you notice in these is uh, it really the door sills kind of come up a little bit higher here in the coupe and really makes it feel aggressive and uh, sporty and so the driving position you also feel pretty low. I mean obviously you can raise the seat up and down uh, to you know adjust that to suit your taste but you do sit pretty low in this and so it really feels sporty and of course we have the one inch uh, lowering springs as well which helps to aid with that feeling there uh, but otherwise the visibility here in the uh, C43 is really pretty good so you know you, the wind it's fairly small but you can see forward very well the hood drops down nicely uh, view out of the sides is pretty good you do have a b-pillar that's a little bit closer to your shoulder there but you have blind spot monitoring and all that stuff of course so you don't have to really worry about that and you can still see out very well the only complaint with visibility I can really say is that the rear window it, feel, it looks really far back there in the rearview mirror and uh, it's a little bit on the small size so that's the only thing um, but again you have a backup camera of course and all that kind of stuff to uh, help you out whenever you're uh, reversing and stuff and still it's fine for you know looking out of the back all right so let's turn that onto this back road here let's see how it does here we go <laughs> oh that was a second gear pull there it did i just left it automatic and <laughs> oh it's fast <laughs> Oh man, so this uh, C43 isn't like the others. So uh, this thing has a three liter uh, twin turbo V6 engine uh, that usually makes 362 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque. This one has a tune. <laughs> so with the tune, this thing according to the owner is making 450 horsepower at the crank and 500 pound-feet of torque, which means that this little three liter V6 is doing almost as much horsepower as the C63's V8 that's twin turbocharged. Uh, so, I mean, it's uh, it's very impressive. I want to do a first gear pull though, because it just started me in second for whatever reason there. Um, and I'm, I can even just go into manual here and play with the gears myself while we wait for another straightaway. But the shifts 
are pretty quick too though. I gotta say, this is a nine speed automatic here in the uh, C43. <laughs> it sounds really good too with that exhaust. Ooh, it rips though. It those up for RPMs is where it's at for sure with this tune. That is where it is at. Man, but I mean, you know, this road is really windy and hilly and this thing is really composed. And I think part of that is, of course, thanks to uh, these springs. The owner said it made it a little bit better with the handling, um, but it was still a very good handling car stock uh, and I have no reason to doubt him. I mean, uh, you know, the AMG models, they don't mess around with the suspension tuning. So, all right, got some really tight corners here. Body roll is man, this thing is flat. I'm telling you what, and I'm sure these tires certainly help to keep it buttoned down too. But I mean, these are some challenging roads, and this thing is just taking it without a sweat. The roads are a little bit damp here, so I'm not going to push it as much as I might otherwise. But it's still, <laughs> it doesn't even seem to matter because the thing is, with these AMGs now, they're all all wheel drive. Now, it's a rear bias all wheel drive system, I think it's like 69% to the rear and then the rest to the front. But uh, you know, it, <laughs> it I think you need it, especially with all this additional power. I think the all wheel drive system certainly helps, but it doesn't feel like, uh, like a super, uh, I don't know, like it doesn't feel like a super heavy. Uh, a fun killing all wheel drive system, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. It, it still feels very uh, light in the nose and still is very eager to throw it into corners. It doesn't really push or understeer, really, even in these really tight sections here as we're kind of coming up to another one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Getting a little bit of slip there from the tires now, but yeah, Ooh, this thing is a Man, this is a missile. It's just, a, I'm having a blast in this thing. Woo. This road is fantastic too. So uh, the road always helps to uh, make a car even more fun. The right car on the right road is a magical combination. But I mean, there's a tiny bit of lean there just because of the weight of these things. Uh, these do uh, feel pretty uh, hefty whenever you really start to push it there because the weight is uh, 39.35 for the, uh, so almost 4,000 pounds uh, curb weight on these. So, I mean, but it, it's a loaded up luxury coupe uh, with, you know, all drive and all that kind of stuff so it's to be expected but honestly it doesn't feel 4,000 pounds I would say 3,800 or so <laughs> all right let's do a first gear pull now see how it does <laughs> the paddles can't keep up with the engine <laughs> to come on and tell you up 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 hurry up and up shift <laughs> oh it's great but i wish it was a little bit quicker with the upshifts i mean it's pretty good but whenever you're full bore full throttle you need to just bang bang immediately and uh even whenever i'm pulling the paddle like 500 rpms before red line it still keeps cutting up cutting me off and it's it's not getting there quick enough but uh i mean whenever you're just cruising around though it is still very very snappy i mean i I would say that the BMW DCT might feel a little bit sharper on the upshifts. Uh, PDK feels a little bit faster, but uh, you know this is still right up there with those uh, transmissions. It's being very, very quick. Another pull. All right, so I figured out a little bit of how to improve the transmission. Put it in the Sport Plus mode. That really uh, helps with making the upshifts more snappy. It also under throttle make them a little rougher but that's okay because it adds drama whenever you do that I still though I still keep hitting it where it's I'm not upshifting fast enough and so it keeps cutting me off right as I'm getting towards the limiter there but um, yeah otherwise though um, one other great thing about this uh, sport plus mode is that it, it greatly increases the crackles and pops on this exhaust and just it sounds so nice on the deacceleration, just bam, 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 I love it. Oh, that's great. This thing, there we go. It's just ferocious though. <laughs> the way that it pulls four grand and on, it's just, I mean, it just leaps forward. And <laughs> I mean, and even with lowering springs and the stiffer suspension, you can still feel that front nose lifting up a little bit whenever you uh, go full throttle. It's just, oh man, the power is great. I love the way this thing feels. Other things to note while we're at highway speeds here, it is remarkably quiet. I mean, all I'm hearing is the exhaust and I can hit a button and turn that off too if I want, but it is like, 
so refined in here. It's really impressive. And also, even in Sport Plus mode here, the ride is really pretty smooth too still. So I mean, it's uh, just, it feels so luxurious still, but it's it feels like a race car at the same time. And it's just, oh, I love it. It's And it's like, it's almost like a GTR feeling where you feel like you're like invincible. You have the all-wheel drive. And of course you're not invincible, but it's just, you know, it's a little bit of a heavier feeling like the GTR. Um, tons and tons of turbocharged power and all-wheel drive grip and awesome handling and and uh, the only thing is this is way nicer to be in than the GTR, of course. All right, so now we're gonna go on the same roads here in sport mode and see how much of a difference that makes. But a couple other things while we're doing that uh, to note about the uh, Mercedes here is that the steering weight is really nice. There isn't a ton of feel through the wheel. I think that's part of them trying to balance in you know, between the luxury and the uh, sportiness sides. And of course, you can change the steering weight uh, and feel with uh, the different driving modes. You can customize with an individual mode as well to make it exactly what you want apart from the drive modes as well, if you'd like. So, uh, very customizable steering. Other things, the throttle response is razor sharp, especially in the Sport Plus mode, but in all modes, it's it's still pretty sharp, but especially Sport Plus, I mean, I, I literally just brush the pedal and it immediately starts accelerating. Brakes as well are fantastic. They're enormous brakes and they just, they feel really aggressive and you can even tell whenever you're coming to a stop, um, they kind of almost, uh, I feel like carbon ceramics because of how <laughs> how aggressive the, they break whenever you really stomp on them. It's imp it's really impressive. Everything about this car that was so impressive, especially with this tune. Like man, I mean, you get so much car for you know roughly sixty thousand or so, depending on how you option it up and stuff. But I mean, I know that some people may look down on the C43, but especially if you're willing to tune it. But even stock, I'm sure these are still very impressive. And so for those that don't need the V8, don't need to have the highest horsepower possible. This is still an amazing package. <laughs> and that was a really, really almost like a jump there. And this thing still is so composed and so buttoned down. Oh, wow, I am like really impressed. Because usually Mercedes was the softer one of the group and you know, even an AMG trim, you know, back in the day, they were just kind of like muscle cars. Uh, but this is really far from that. It's really buttoned down. I mean, I think it might feel a tad bit heavier than an M4. This is one of those cars where I don't want to. I don't want to stop driving it. I like really just want to like spend the entire day going on back road after back road in this thing because it's it's that good. And that's that doesn't happen with all the cars that I review or even half the cars I review. This is really special feeling and an absolute blast. Oh, that exhaust! <laughs> I could listen to that all day. Oh my gosh, it's glorious! <laughs> this whole car, I, I, wow, I, I figured I'd probably like this. It's an AMG after all, but I didn't think I would fall in love with it and be head over heels for it like I am. I, wow, this car really surprised me and impressed me. Uh, I mean, everyone uses the the BMW, you know, M4 and M3 as like the benchmark, but this. I, I don't know. Honestly, I think I like this a little bit better. Even though it may feel a tiny bit heavier, like I said, I think that's a perfectly fine trade-off for what I think is a better sounding engine, a far nicer vehicle to be in, um, and just... AMG, they know what they're doing here. And uh, people can scoff at this baby AMG, the C43. Not me. This thing is so impressive already. I can't even imagine the C63. That just gonna be mind-blowing if I ever get to drive one of those. So anyway, I could go on all day about this car. It's just mind-blowingly good. I'm so shocked at just how amazing this thing is. It's so much fun. It's so intoxicating to drive. Um, so huge thanks to Alex like, once again for allowing me to review his awesome C43 here. I can see why he loves this thing. It is so much fun. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the C43 and which one you'd rather have, this or an M4, in the comments below. And thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.